Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm in the studio with Sam Messman from fcpworks.com and wemakemovies.org. He's going to show us some workflow stuff uh, with regard to metadata, bringing audio in and having it tagged and syncing in. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to show. All, right? there are all kinds of stuff. I mean, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Good. All kinds of stuff. Basically, there's this program called Sync and Link, which allows you to sync second source audio through time code and create batch synchronized clips in Final Cut 10. Um, so pretty much you can, it, it saves all of your syncing. And even with, you know, in Final Cut, you have to go one by one and do all the way. Right. So you can take a bunch of video clips, a bunch of audio clips, and then batch them together and create synchronized clips. And it's going to have synchronized clips for an entire day's worth of footage in like seconds. Right. But there's a secondary uh, function of that sync and link that you really like, and that it tags the audio rolls. Exactly. So there's also, within that, you may have a uh, production mixer who is recording component names, right? And right. you want those component names to pass through to an AAF to Pro Tools so that your Pro Tools guys will know how your audio is, how, oh, how to sort your audio. Yeah. And it's going to map things accordingly and put everything from a given mic onto a different channel. So if your production sound designer is recording things based on booms and labs and characters, that's all going to show up in your AF, and you won't have to do anything through this method. That's fantastic. So, so let's we... go dive in. I'll stop talking, and, or I'll keep talking, but I'll be working. And <laughs> You'll be FCP working. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so basically, if you, if you look here, we've got an entire day's worth of video and audio. And on this particular audio file, you'll see that uh, it's got uh, four components here, and they're all named with Final Cut's default naming scheme of naming after the scene or scene and take or whatever the clip is named, dash audio for each of the components. Now you can go through and rename these here, like boom. That's uh, a lot of work, clip by clip. <laughs> it is, although you can group rename them, right. but it's still, but still, those still won't transfer as roles when you edit them into the timeline. So right. it's still, it's like a lot of work to get some of this together. Um, but the good news is that there's a much faster way to do this, which is if your uh, sound designer took the time to label these. Mm -hmm. So notice these are labeled. These are going to be labeled differently when they come back in than, than how I've labeled them or how Final Cut lists them here. So let's go ahead and export an XML of this. You're event. selecting the event. So you select the event, and we're going to export an, an XML of the event for the entire day's worth of footage. We're going to place it in this folder here. And while that's going, we'll go ahead and open up Sync and Link. And it's almost ready, so let's go into our folder here. And there is our XML. I'm going to select that, open it. It's going to find all these different clips. Now, there's a couple uh, preferences you need to notice as you do this, which is to use track names from the audio IXML for subroll names, which means that basically how your sound uh, mixer has labeled his tracks is how they're going to appear when they come back in to Final Cut. Right. And to use the subroll names for the audio component names so that that's how it's going to display there and you're going to have subrolls um, created on import in Final Cut. So let's go ahead. That's literally all I have to do. I have these selected. You can also, there's a couple other preferences where you can decide how it's going to apply metadata and some of that. We're not going to worry about that just yet. It's not. But, um, we're going to save this XML, and we'll save this uh, to exactly where it was. And now it's going to automatically open up right in Final Cut. So, and so the cool thing about Sync and Link, which is hands down the coolest thing, um, is the fact that it's going to cr is that now all of my footage is synced based on time. It code. created a new event too. Look at that. It creates a new event. And I'm a synced the synced collection. Keyword collection. You'll notice I have storyline and now connected audio. Wow. That's a really time saver. Yeah, so if I go through, my footage is all synced, right? And that's great. But if you also look over here, my audio files have now been re renamed differently. The connected audio that I showed you earlier is now channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel five was actually mislabeled. It should have been, or it should have been channel four, but if you notice, it's channel five, sure. and it was mislabeled by the, the sound, sound mixer. The sound mixer, right. So anyway, the point of this is, is now when you go into the info tab, of the inspector, you're also going to see that under roles, I have all of these different sub roles that have now been, that now come in. Now, well, those sub roles were set up in Sync and Link. You can name them they however you want. You could say like Steve's Lav, Sam's Lav, or Mark's Boom, and you set that up, and they come in that way as sub roles. Exactly. But if but if I come here, you'll notice that this same exact audio file does not have a role on it. So 
you know? So it's only, its only role is dialogue. Um, so it came in as a dialogue role. So basically, when I come to this sync clip, there's now, in addition to all of that, within dialogue, it's applied these various roles because that's how it's tagged the individual components. And I'll show you what I mean by that here. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm going to make a new project. And we'll call this test. And I'm going to just going to edit this into the timeline and select it and show the components, right? So now, if I open up my timeline index and I go under roles and I select each of these different That's fantastic. Sub -roles, Look at that. These have all been tagged. And when I export an AAF through X to Pro or Pro Tools, based on how these have been it'll named. It'll maintain that metadata through the pipeline. Exactly. And then your AAF is going to be prepped for you. I don't know why everybody doesn't rush out to buy that right now. I mean, because no one knows. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. So yeah. So um, another reason to use roles or why roles are so awesome is that just to save a ton of work. I mean, the magic of XML does all this for you. So essentially, what Philip has created, his company has created a, this great little conduit between the sound mixer and Final Cut Pro to keep things across. And really, the more organized your sound mixer is and the more you communicate with them in advance, the more prepared you're going to be, the further. So it's, it's literally like with anything else in Final Cut. The more prepared you are and the more you plan ahead, the easier everything gets down the line. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, Sam, for that, that wonderful tip. Make sure you check out uh, fcpworks.com and wemakemovies.org. And check out rippletraining.com. We have tons of tutorials on Final Cut Pro, and we have plugins and all that stuff. Follow us on Twitter. Check out our YouTube channel, which we release tutorials every Monday. We want to thank you for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio.